Hello everyone. Today all I'm going to do is go over some of the homework questions uh, that were given to you the other day. Um, just to make sure that you understood them and if you had any questions that maybe this will help you with that and if you have any more questions please make sure to email me. So I've already uh, copied the homework questions in this document. So we have, in each standard viewing window, the graph of y equals x squared is shown as a dotted parabola, and the graph of a relation of the form y is equal to ax squared is shown as a solid parabola. So let's just stop there for a second. Um, so they're talking about dotted parabolas and solid parabolas, so let's make sure we know what we're talking about here. Um, so the graph of y equals x squared is shown as a dotted parabola. Okay, so that's that's your regular parabola. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a dotted parabola, we have a dotted parabola. Those are our regular y equals x squared parabolas, the dotted one. The solid one is in the form of y equals ax squared. So what are they saying there? They're saying that we're multiplying x squared by a value of a, which is going to be a number, and that value of a is going to give us the solid parabola. So using uh, letter a as our first example, the dotted one is x squared. What kind of number would have created the solid parabola? All right. So clearly the solid parabola is compressed because it's squished down and out. Anytime you see a wider parabola than original parabola, that is a compression. And then in the second part of the statement, they say for each solid parabola is a less than negative one, between zero and negative one, between zero and one, or greater than one. Now, that's a very complicated way of kind of going over what I went in class. Basically, we wanna know is a positive or negative, and is the number of a greater than one or between zero and one. All right, so that's all we're really asking here. So if this is a compression, we know that A has to be between zero and one. It is a smile shape, so it's also positive. Now the, the, the mathematical um, terminology for smile is opens upwards. So the parabola is opening towards the upwards direction. Okay, But it is between 0 and 1 and positive for A. For B, we have our dotted line, our dotted parabola, which is our regular parabola, and then we have our solid parabola right here. So that solid parabola is upside down. which right away we know means is negative. So our a value is going to be negative. It's also narrower than the given dotted line. Now opposite to the compression, which makes it wider, narrower means that the a value's number, so the a number, is greater than one. Okay. So that's, I don't like to use this way of stating things. I think everybody can understand that the A number itself is greater than one, so a number like three or four or 5.7, okay? But then that number is also negative to make it upside down. For C, we have a uh, sol or dotted line for our regular parabola. Look at how wide the given solid line parabola is, okay? So wider and it's upside down again. So it's going to be negative for C, and it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. Now a question I would ask uh, the students is which number between 0 and 1 is smaller between A and C? Okay, so let's say A was 0 0.5 to make it a little bit wider. Uh, th would the number that causes the wide uh, aspect of the C parabola be like 0 0.25 or would it be 0 0.75? Like which number, which way would the number 0 0.5 have to go to make the parabola even wider than what it was before? And to give you a hint, think about 
what the decimal number does. It takes the height of a point and divides it by something, right? So if you're making the height go down here, you're dividing by two, what would make the height go down even further? Would you divide by a number smaller than two or would you divide by a number bigger than two? Now, if you're dividing by two, that's one half, okay? If you're dividing by a number bigger than two, it would be like one quarter. If you're dividing by a number smaller than two, it'd be like one divided by 1.1. So which, which one is it? Which one gives you a smaller value? Okay, which one is the smallest fraction? So I'm not going to answer that question. It'll probably come up later anyway. But those are the types of questions that a mathematician would want his students to kind of be able to answer or maybe think about at least. So looking at B and D, B and D, our dotted line is our regular parabola. Our solid line is our new parabola. Our new parabola is narrower and it is a smile shape so it's not upside down so it's going to be positive uh, which we usually just you know assume well I'll just write it down because I did for a as well so it's positive but narrower means a is a number greater than one now I wonder how many of you would know this symbol for saying that a is greater than one okay now between 0 and 1 a little bit more complicated this is how we write between 0 and 1 in math. A is greater than 0, A is smaller than 1. A lot of students get confused with this type of terminology here uh, because they want to le read it from left to right, which is the normal way we read. But when you're reading one of these, you read it from the A. So A is greater than 0, A is smaller than 1. But uh, as long as you can say it in words, that's fine. Okay, question number 4. Describe the shape and position of each parabola relative to the graph of y equals x squared. Sketch each graph. Now, I had suggested that you don't technically have to sketch each graph. Uh, you can by using technology, which is the most efficient way of doing it. But if you can describe everything in words, uh, there shouldn't be a problem. So let's look at a, which is y is equal to 3x squared. Now, y is equal to 3x squared has what values in it um, and in fact uh, before I start here just to be clear uh, there was homework given uh, a few days ago as well or a couple of days ago as well on this stuff I'm gonna kind of talk about both of those because um, we didn't actually correct the homework from the first day but um, we might as well discuss a few of these questions just to get make sure that all of that stuff is understood so, so y is equal to 3x squared um, is what we're doing, remember, is we're, com we're comparing all of these equations to y is equal to ax squared plus k. Okay? And what we had seen, just as a recap, is that k moves the parabola up or down, depending on whether it's positive or negative. And the a value, I'm not going to write all the summaries of a because there's a lot of them, but a can either compress or stretch the parabola and it can flip the parabola upside, upside down. So in this statement here, where is the plus k? There is none. That means this is plus zero, okay? If there's no k, that means the k is zero. So that means that the parabola has its vertex at zero, zero. The vertex did not slide up or down, it's at zero, zero. Now what does the three do? So the three is a number bigger than one right so 3 is bigger than 1 well what does that do to the parabola well if we use the same formatting as they did on the other page let's do our dotted line as the regular parabola our new parabola is going to be narrower than that and forgive me for how bad those parabolas look folks it's really hard to draw on my tablet to make it clear but that's what we've discovered. If, if the number a, forget about the sign, if the number itself is bigger than one, then your parabola is going to be narrower, okay? So when it says describe the shape and position of each parabola, what would we say? We'd say vertex uh, hasn't moved. 
parabola narrower. Okay. Now, uh, let's do B. B was actually from a couple of days ago, but let's do it anyway. So we've got Y is equal to X squared plus 3. So what's happening with that parabola? Well, what is my A value? Now be very careful here. I'm sighing because this is a little bit tricky to explain, so let me try. In A, when I said the K was missing, I said it would be plus 0 and the number would be 0. Now a lot of students will mess what I'm about to say up. What is the number hiding in front of X? Now, it is not 0. The number hiding in front of X is a 1. So why was the number missing in A a 0 and the number missing in B a 1? Well, it has all to, all to do with the fact that the 0 is adding and the 1 is multiplying. So if the number that's missing is an addition or a subtraction, the number is assumed to be a 0. If the number that's missing is a multiplication or a division, the number is assumed to be a 1. So there's a huge difference between adding and subtracting a number and multiplying and dividing a number, and this is just one of those differences. Okay, So be very, very careful with that. So that means our A value is 1. If our A value is 1, that means the parabola hasn't stretched or compressed at all. It's the regular shaped x squared parabola. Okay. The plus 3, as we saw the other day, and what I mentioned up above here, is that the k moves the parabola up or down. So which way is this parabola moving? So I'm just going to draw a little picture. Here's my regular parabola. Centered at 0, 0. Where is the new parabola? The new parabola looks exactly the same shape-wise, which is very hard to do freehand, but has moved up by 3. Okay, So I'm not going to write out the sentence here, uh, and in fact for the rest of them we're just going to do them orally. And we can do all of the rest, even though I didn't assign all of the rest, we can actually do all of them now. So let's look at C. C is y is equal to negative uh, 0.5x squared. So what does the negative do? The negative flips the parabola upside down. What does the 0.5 do? The 0.5 is a number between 0 and 1, which we learnt compresses the parabola and makes it wider. So this parabola is going to be upside down, and I'm going to exaggerate how wide it is, okay, and wider than the regular parabola. It does not move up or down because there's no k value. If we look at d, d has a 1 in front for x squared, of the x squared, sorry, which are, is our a value. So our a value is 1, which means the parabola does not change in shape, but it does move, and it moves down by 12 spots. So your parabola would look like this. Okay, now that's supposed to be a parabola, not a v-shape. For E, we've got 0.15 for our A value and 13 for our K value. The 0.15 A value compresses the parabola, but it's positive, so it's still a smile shape. Then the plus 13 moves the parabola up by 13. So we're going to have a compressed parabola up above at 13. And I'm hoping that that's starting to become a little bit easier at this point. If you see a negative in front of the x squared, whatever the number is we'll deal with later, but the negative means it's upside down. If you see a positive in front of the x squared, the positive means it's right side up. Then you look at the number itself. If the number is greater than 1, it is going to be narrower. If the number is between 0 and 1, it's going to be wider. And then you look at the k value. If the k value is positive, it's moved upwards. If the k value is negative, it's moved downwards. So using all of that information, let's look at f. Negative 7 is our a value. The negative flips it upside down. The 7 is greater than 1, so it is narrow, upside down. 
So it's upside down and narrow, and it has moved up by six. So upside down and narrow, moved up by six, would look something like that. And I'm going to leave G and H for you to do on your own. Moving on. Suppose each pair of relations were graphed on the same set of axes, which parabola would be the widest or the most vertically compressed, and which parabola would have its vertex farther from the x-axis and justify your answers? So for this one, I had assigned A, B, and E to do. This is actually very similar to the one we just did before. So you're looking at these two equations and you're asking yourselves these two questions. Which one would be the most wide of the two? Well, our A value here is a decimal between zero and one. Our A value here is a number greater than one. We know that numbers greater than one make the parabola narrow and numbers between zero and one make the parabola wide. So clearly the widest would be 0.2x squared. So the A value controls the first part. The second part says which parabola would be furthest from the ver would, it, would have its vertex, sorry, furthest from the x-axis. So the vertex of a regular parabola is right on zero, zero. Well, what controls how high or how low the vertex will go? Well, that's your K value. Well, your K value for this one is plus zero. Your K value for this one is plus six. So clearly the plus six is the one that is furthest away from the x-axis, okay? Plus six would move the parabola up here. So for B, same idea, number greater than one, number between zero and one, and I'm gonna forget about the negative for a second, okay? I'm just looking at the point four here. So the point four is between zero and one, so that's gonna be the wider parabola, so that's the widest one. And then our K value, well, this one is plus nine, and this one is minus eight. Now, these two parabolas are moving in opposite directions. This one's going up, and this one's going down. But that's not what the question's asking. The question's just asking which one is furthest from the x-axis. Going up by nine will bring you further away from the x-axis than bringing you down by eight. So, A, or sorry, the, uh, the first equation is gonna be further away than the second equation from the x-axis. And the last one, now E is interesting because both of these numbers are um, between zero and one. Now I had asked the question earlier, which decimal do you think makes things wider? And um, I'm gonna answer the question now without telling you why, okay? But the 0 0.03 will make the parabola wider. So I'm, I'm not sure if you can figure out why. I had talked about the fact that this number affects the height of the points of the regular parabola. So will multiplying a point by 0.2 make the number bigger or smaller than multiplying a number by 0 0.03? Let me give you a hint. If you thought of these numbers as percentages, 0.2 would be 20% and 0 0.03 would be 3%. If you do 20% of the regular height and you do 3% of the regular height, which one is shorter? And shorter heights, I'm kind of giving away the answer here, mean uh, more compressed, okay? So think of it that way and it might help you out. Now this one is negative, which means upside down, which doesn't really mean anything to us in the context of this question because the next question just says which one's furthest away from the x-axis. Furthest away from the x-axis would be the one that has the highest k value numerically. It doesn't matter what the sign is, again. So furthest away from the x-axis, if you move up by two, you're further away from the x-axis than if you move down by one. And I believe that's the end of the homework correction. So I hope that this has helped you understand those homework corrections. Um, in the next lesson, we're actually going to uh, recap the previous lesson on changes uh, around the A value. And we're gonna start looking at how can we algebraically or mathematically come up with the equation of a transformation given either a table of values or a graph. 
So that's it for today. There's no extra homework today. Um, let me know if you need any extra help through email and uh, I will talk to you soon.